Here was someone who claimed to have worked at Area 51, back engineering alien technology. Everybody who sees a UFO is crazy, that our government has lied about UFO information, that it's withheld UFO files. Bob Lazar rose to fame in the late 1980s with his compelling narrative that shook the foundations of traditional beliefs surrounding UFOs. Now, almost 30 years later. But at the time, yeah, I was petrified. This was no joking around. His statements, particularly regarding his involvement in a top-secret project at Area 51, ignited intense speculation and discussion. The craft that I worked on, that when it's, when it's going to travel a long distance, that is how it operates. Lazar claimed to have been tasked with reverse engineering alien spacecraft technology, a revelation that challenged the boundaries of what was deemed possible. Who exactly is Bob Lazar? And what did his alleged work include? Join us as we delve into the curious world of Bob Lazar and explore the mysteries behind the alleged reverse engineering of extraterrestrial technology. Number one, the UFO whistleblower revealed. Born January 26, 1959, Robert Scott Lazar is best known as an American conspiracy theorist. Bob Lazar was not always associated with UFO tales. In fact, he was a physicist by training. According to his account, he was employed to work in a classified area of Area 51, the most notorious and secretive military base in the United States. The facility, known as S-4, was said to contain top secret and extraterrestrial projects. The main focus of Lazar's story is his assertion that he was hired to work on a project that involved reverse engineering alien technology. He described a scenario in which scientists from Earth, including himself, were trying to understand and duplicate the highly developed technological marvels that were allegedly recovered from extraterrestrial visitors. These were not simply stealth planes or advanced weapons. This technology, he claimed, originated from space. In addition to being a first-hand narrative, Bob Lazar's revelation posed a direct challenge to the U.S. government's stance on UFOs, asserting that they not only knew about these visits, but also possessed solid physical evidence of their existence in some cases. Lazar rose to fame as a whistleblower who exposed one of the largest cover-ups in human history. To others, however, he was viewed as a hoaxer who contrived a complex story to garner attention, or possibly for other reasons. Over the years, his credibility has been bolstered and undermined by issues about his purported educational background and work history. Regardless of one's belief in the authenticity of his account, Bob Lazar has had a significant impact on the fields of UFO study and popular culture. He also unlocked many mysteries, many of which are still unsolved to this day. One of Bob Lazar's most captivating stories centers on his depiction of a fleet of nine flying saucers. These weren't merely simulations or models. Lazar stated that he was granted limited access to one specific craft, which he codenamed the Sport Model. This saucer was sleek and smooth, shaped like a classic UFO, and had an interior that appeared to be both organic and biomechanical. Lazar claimed that these were actual extraterrestrial craft stored at the S-4 facility near Area 51. Each of these saucers, according to Lazar, had its unique design and size, suggesting either different alien civilizations or various models from one advanced extraterrestrial race. Lazar noted that there are no conventional human-designed controls, such as buttons, switches, or levers, within the sport model. Rather, all aspects of the craft's construction indicated that it wasn't designed with human physiology in mind, including the way its seats and panels responded to touch and intention. The seamless construction, smooth metallic surfaces, and lack of correct angles all alluded to engineering knowledge well beyond what we currently comprehend. More intriguingly, Lazar asserted that these crafts used a propulsion system that was not only advanced, but also completely outside the realm of current scientific knowledge. He discussed a power source known as Element 115 that was used to produce gravity waves, which effectively allowed the sources to fall in the direction they desired to travel. If verified, this propulsion technique would completely transform our knowledge of physics and space exploration. However, 
Where did these crafts originate from? Lazar suggested they were part of a long-running reverse engineering project by the U.S. government, intending to decipher the technology for potential military and scientific applications, though he didn't claim to know their precise origins. Regardless of one's point of view, the tale of the Nine Sources is unquestionably one of the most fascinating pieces of UFO stories in contemporary times. Bob's consistent descriptions of these nine mysterious crafts throughout his many interviews have been a cornerstone for many of his believers. They either lend credibility to his tale or showcase a deeply intricate and unwavering commitment to his narrative. Bob Lazar's purported experiences at the S-4 facility are detailed in his tales, but they go beyond descriptions of tangible objects to offer an insight into technology that, in his words, defies current scientific knowledge. While many had doubts about Lazar and his claims, his mention of Element 115 made it harder for even the most skeptical doubters to continue doubting him. Number 2. Element 115 – Space Fuel That Manipulated Gravity One of the main ideas of Lazar's revelations is that the propulsion systems of these extraterrestrial vehicles functioned on concepts that we as a species have not yet completely understood. He talked a lot about Element 115, which at the time of his first revelations had not yet been demonstrated or found in the periodic table. According to Lazar, this element functioned as the spacecraft's fuel. However, what makes this element noteworthy is not just how it was used as a source of energy, but also how it was said to manipulate gravity. The crafts did not just fly in the traditional sense. Instead, they created their gravitational fields, which allowed them to warp and bend space-time. This mode of travel would mean that instead of traveling through space, space would move around the crafts. But how can one even begin to control gravity, a force we are only beginning to understand? Lazar explained that the craft had devices called gravity amplifiers that, when paired with element 115, produced a gravitational wave that was focused by three different cylindrical structures underneath the craft. This has important implications for understanding the structure of the universe and for space travel. The idea that such technological advancements existed somewhere in the universe amazed those who heard it. Lazar also described the interiors of the craft, which were equally mysterious because they lacked obvious interfaces or controls. The craft may operate in a biomechanical or even telepathic manner because everything in the cockpit of the sport model craft he described appeared to be made of a single, seamless material. This design strategy begs the question of how these purported extraterrestrial civilizations manufactured their vehicles because it is hard for them to have joints or seams. The most intriguing part of Lazar's claim was that at the time he made it, Element 115 did not exist on the periodic table. Rather, it was a material with properties that seemed straight out of a science fiction novel. Doubters quickly became aware of this, using it as justification to refute Lazar's tales. However, in a truly bizarre twist of scientific progression, the element was synthesized in laboratories in 2003 and added to the periodic table as Muscovium. It's important to note that there is a notable distinction between Lazar's claims and the element that was synthesized scientifically. In anticipation of this discrepancy, Lazar hypothesized that the stable form of element 115, the one with the unique properties he described, was probably found in regions of the universe with different star production mechanisms than our own. The element 115 produced in laboratories is extremely unstable, decaying rapidly and not exhibiting any of the marvelous gravitational properties described by Lazar. The conversations Bob Lazar has on Element 115 act as a backbone for his larger story. Whether you consider Lazar to be a liar or a whistleblower, the scientific community's version of events doesn't directly support his claims, but its very existence offers a tantalizing hint that there is still so much about the universe we do not understand. The discussions surrounding Element 115 illustrate the fascinating interaction between fringe theories and mainstream science. Despite all the continued doubts, 
There are many things that more than suggest that Lazar and his wild tales are rooted in truth. Let's take a look at some. Number three, the evidences for Lazar's stories. The tales Lazar has spun serve as an engrossing exploration of what might be possible beyond the limits of our current knowledge. In a world of UFO stories and whistleblowers, where stories can often take a ridiculous and embellished twist, Lazar has remained consistent with his tale, regardless of where he told it. Over the years, debates over the validity of Lazar's claims have raged, but his reliable and accurate accounts of technology, beyond our understanding, continue to fuel discussions in both scientific and UFO enthusiast circles. However, there remains Bob Lazar, a unique individual, whose story has persisted since it was first brought to the public's attention in the late 1980s. What lends credence to Lazar's assertions is not only the level of detail in his revelations, but also the unwavering consistency with which he has delivered them, regardless of the format or audience, be it radio interviews, documentaries, or casual conversations. Since Lazar made his startling revelations about the advanced technology at Area 51, doubters and skeptics have surrounded his story. They have offered a good number of arguments to refute Lazar's claims, including a lack of hard data, doubts about his training and experience, and accusations that he is a con artist looking for attention or money. Despite this intense scrutiny, which would cause many to back down or change their statements, Lazar's central story about the alien craft, their propulsion systems, and the unseen mechanisms of S-4 has remained unwavering. The best judge is time, as they say. And in the 30 years after Lazar's claims were made, some aspects of his story have unintentionally come to pass. For example, Element 115, which was once a significant but fantastical part of his tale, became real when scientists formally added it to the periodic table in 2003. Though our synthesized version of the element deviates from Lazar's descriptions and its stability is erratic. But the mere revelation of it caused even the most ardent skeptics to pause. Finally, it's important to consider the personal cost to Lazar of coming forward with such a story, true or false. Making such claims places one in the public eye and frequently results in estrangement from both personal and professional circles. Lazar has frequently conveyed his regret about disclosing these pieces of information and the effect they had on his personal life. If Lazar's goal was fame or money, one would think he would work harder to make additional claims to stay in the spotlight. But instead of doing so, he retreated from the limelight, gave fewer interviews, and stuck to his original story. This behavior stands in stark contrast to individuals who fabricate tales for their benefit. And it raises the question of why someone would continue a lie for more than 30 years, particularly given the significant personal cost. Some of Lazar's claims about the sport model, like its propulsion, have caused many enthusiasts to wonder if our technological advancements have anything to do with aliens. Number four, could aliens be responsible for our technology? Throughout human history, societies have grown and cultures have built upon the knowledge of their forebears, giving rise to new inventions and methodologies over time. Historians, sociologists, and scientists have all contributed to this steady march of progress. But every so often, there is a blip in the timeline, a sudden, seemingly inconceivable burst of advancement. In just a few decades, we went from room-sized computers with the computational capacity of a modern calculator to pocket-sized devices that could access vast amounts of human knowledge. These technological leaps are fascinating not only because they produce technological marvels, but also because they frequently defy expectations of progress. Take the rapid development of the integrated circuit or microchip as an example. Now let's indulge in some speculative thinking to add a sprinkle of cosmic wonder to the mix. What if some of these incredibly quick technological advancements weren't inspired by human ideas? What if some of our innumerable innovations were secretly inspired, modified, or even directly acquired from extraterrestrial sources? It's an intriguing idea, 
especially when we take into account how quickly some of these technologies have developed and the revolutionary effects they've had on society. One could argue that these jumps could be explained by human collaboration, the worldwide dissemination of information, and accumulative innovation, and they would be mostly correct. However, isn't there a tiny bit of wonder, a tiny what-if, that might suggest otherwise? Given the size of the universe, which contains billions of stars and possibly even more planets, could it be possible that we've had a little prod along the way? Even though this speculation stays firmly in the realm of fiction, the act of wondering and questioning itself pushes us forward by encouraging us to look beyond the familiar horizon and consider the endless possibilities that lie there. Whether or not those possibilities are inspired by something or someone beyond the stars, or whether they are our creation, remains one of the greatest mysteries of our time. Moments of technological marvels that, at first appearance, seem to appear out of nowhere, have occurred frequently throughout human history. These abrupt advancements that contradict expectations of progress frequently spark rumors about extraterrestrial influences. The field of advanced propulsion systems and their unusual technology is one particularly fascinating area of investigation. Number 5. The Propulsion Systems Inspired by Alien Technology Let's begin with the foundations. For the longest time, our understanding of propulsion has been based on Newton's third law, which states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Everything from combustion engines in cars to massive rocket engines that launch astronauts into space is governed by this principle. But in the last few decades, there have been rumors and leaked reports of propulsion systems that defy this accepted knowledge. In the scientific community, the concept of reactionless drives or propulsion systems that operate without producing any noticeable exhaust has generated both curiosity and derision. Certain anomalies over the years have been the subject of several accounts, some of which are more reliable than others, concerning substances and technology that appear to defy the rules of physics. One such example is strange metals, which, no matter how they are shaped, always return to their original form. These materials are incredibly robust and lightweight, but they don't quite fit the present framework of material science or metallurgy. The subject of energy sources is yet another example. The electricity used to power modern human technology comes from a variety of sources, including nuclear power, renewable energy, and fossil fuels. However, there have been ongoing rumors about devices that are frequently connected to unexplained aerial phenomena and are powered by energy sources that are outside the scope of modern science. These sources appear to be compact, incredibly efficient, and have negligible emissions profiles, making them ideal for current technological applications. If these rumors are true, the implications of such an energy source would be revolutionary. When putting everything together, one could argue that these technological anomalies and whispers of advanced propulsion systems suggest a possible external influence, possibly extraterrestrial. However, without hard evidence, these theories remain speculative and the search for answers continues. Meanwhile, these mysteries provide a tantalizing peek into the possible, encouraging us to push the boundaries of what is known and reach for the stars, both literally and metaphorically. While propulsions and power sources are things we have fundamental knowledge about, some rumored substances like metamaterials and advanced alloys are a new topic for us, leading to further speculations about their existence and origins. Number 6. Metamaterials and Advanced Alloys Confuse the Scientists Researchers and amateurs alike are fascinated by metamaterials, a class of materials that contain characteristics not found in naturally occurring substances. Metamaterials are remarkable because of their extraordinary, almost otherworldly capacity to control electromagnetic waves in ways that conventional materials are unable to ranging from super lenses that surpass the constraints of normal optics to invisibility cloaks. These materials appear to have science fiction-like potential applications. Exploring their structure in greater detail, the power of metamaterials comes from the intricately designed microstructures, which are often smaller than the wavelength of light they interact with. 
By controlling and designing these structures at a microscopic scale, scientists can manipulate how these materials interact with light, radio waves, and other forms of electromagnetic radiation. As disappointing as it might seem, metamaterials are not derived from exotic elements sourced from distant galaxies. On the other hand, discussing advanced alloys takes us into a marginally different area. What if there are alloys beyond our current comprehension that have properties so unique that they challenge our current scientific understanding? Alloys, as we understand them, are combinations of metals designed to create certain desirable properties. Examples of these alloys include the bronze of our ancient ancestors and the high-strength steel and super alloys of today. There have been rumors, particularly in the circles surrounding unexplained aerial phenomena, regarding the discovery of unknown alloys. These materials are frequently linked to mysterious crash sites or encounters, and are said to possess characteristics that our current understanding of metallurgy cannot explain, such as their ability to withstand extremely high temperatures, their mysterious lightness combined with strength, or other special electromagnetic interactions. These alloys could be another piece in the jigsaw puzzle of possible extraterrestrial technology. While the full potential and history of metamaterials and advanced alloys are still up for investigation, their very existence forces us to consider the boundaries of our knowledge and pushes us toward a future in which the distinctions between the natural and artificial, the understood and the mysterious, become increasingly hazy, advancing our pursuit of knowledge and creativity. Given all that we know about alien technology, it is particularly instructive to take a look at a time in our history when many were certain a UFO event happened. Number 7. Metallic UFO Wreckage Found on Earth A seemingly plain town in New Mexico became the focal point of an event that would fuel debates, investigations, and theories for decades to come. But what really happened at Roswell, and more importantly, did it have an ongoing effect on our technological development? Few events in the annals of modern UFO history have caught the public's imagination and stoked as much debate as the 1947 Roswell incident. The official story is well known. About 80 miles northwest of Roswell, on June 14, 1947, rancher W.W. W. Mac Brazel and his son Vernon were traveling across their ranch land when they came upon something unusual. Brazel described it as a large area of bright wreckage made up of rubber strips, tin foil, tough paper, and sticks. The lightweight, metallic-looking fabric was strewn and shredded over the sagebrush and gravel of the New Mexico desert. Unsure of what to do with the recently discovered things, or how they ended up on the property, Brazel gathered all the enigmatic wreckage he could locate on July 4th. He delivered everything to Sheriff George Wilcox in Roswell on July 7th by car. Wilcox was also perplexed. In search of information, he got in touch with Colonel Butch Blanchard, the commander of the 509th Composite Group at the nearby Roswell Army Airfield. Blanchard faced a dead end. As he moved up the command structure, he decided to get in touch with General Roger W. Ramey, who was in charge of the 8th Air Force at Fort Worth, Texas, and his superior. To cut a long story short, the U.S. military first claimed it was a flying disc before retracting that claim and declaring it to be the remains of a weather balloon. Case closed. However, the official narrative's contradictions and swift backtracking only served to fuel rumors, and soon there were reports of not just debris, but also actual crashed spacecraft and even extraterrestrial bodies being recovered from the site. Let's examine the Roswell incident's implications in the context of technology. There is a theory, albeit one that is largely confined to the realm of science fiction, that some of the technology or materials recovered from the Roswell site found their way into secret research labs dedicated to reverse engineering. These labs seek to understand, replicate, and possibly even incorporate extraterrestrial technologies into human-made devices. They take into account the development and emergence of stealth technology, advanced propulsion systems, and even the aforementioned integrated circuits. Could it be that these technological advancements happened by happenstance, with no real evidence connecting the Roswell incident to them? At the very least, 
the timing is intriguing. Additionally, witness accounts, despite frequently being discounted or ignored, have alluded to the possibility of technologies that go beyond what is currently understood. Rumors of materials that could alter in composition or shape or propulsion systems that defied physics have persisted. Outside of the Roswell incident, other sightings of unidentified flying objects have fueled the fire of alien influence in our technological advancement. Number 8. Related Shocking Tales of UFO Events The story of alien life and technology is further supported by several sightings reported throughout, particularly in the United States. Let's begin with the Maury Island incident, which occurred in Washington's Puget Sound in 1947. Strange things, including rocks and metal bits, are said to have fallen from the enormous, donut-shaped object that was observed hovering over Puget Sound and crashed on the nearby island of Maury. Two witnesses reported the encounter, and UFO enthusiasts are still intrigued by the story and continue to speculate about it today. Just after that, in 1971, was the Delphos UFO sighting in Kansas. The incident involved reports of a big glowing object hanging over Delphos in the sky. It was said to have a round form and to be radiating dazzling light. Several people reported seeing the encounter. Next was the famous UFO sighting in Ohio in 1973, known as the Coin Helicopter Incident. Eyewitnesses claim that as a U.S. Army Reserve chopper was over Mansfield, Ohio, it noticed an odd, cylindrical object that appeared to be hovering in mid-air. The item was said to have several lights on its surface and to be over 100 feet long. The item appeared to be maneuvering in a way that defied the laws of physics, and the helicopter crew claimed that it was affecting their equipment. The Gulf Breeze 6 occurred between 1987 and 1988. There were several reports of UFO sightings in Gulf Breeze, Florida. Six people in Florida reported seeing several unusual flying objects, one of which was a huge, triangular-shaped UFO, according to sources. While some contend that the sightings were fakes or misidentifications of other aircraft, others maintain that these were actual encounters with extraterrestrial planes. Official investigations have yielded no definitive answers. Yet another was the 1997 Phoenix Lights incident that took place in Phoenix, Arizona. A big, triangular-shaped object was seen soaring over the city by multiple witnesses. The thing was characterized as gigantic, silent, and with several lights coming from it. Even with a wealth of photographic evidence and eyewitness reports, the Phoenix Lights incident is still up for discussion and conjecture. Many think the item was an alien spacecraft, while others think it was a covert military aircraft. On the topic of advanced technological systems that seem ahead of the current understanding of science, the technology used to create the James Webb Telescope has raised eyebrows. Number 9. The James Webb Telescope is suspicious. The Hubble Space Telescope is often described as the predecessor to the James Webb Space Telescope. But in actuality, the James Webb Space Telescope and its enabling technology are nothing short of revolutionary, with the primary mirror measuring 6.5 meters, more than 2.5 times the diameter of the Hubble. These capabilities will redefine our understanding of the universe. The James Webb Space Telescope offers previously unheard of levels of sensitivity and resolution, but the engineering behind this telescope, rather than just its size, is what makes it special. It is made up of 18 hexagonal sections that have a small layer of gold applied to them to maximize infrared reflection. Individual mirror adjustments are possible, enabling in-flight calibrations. This design guarantees ideal imaging performance even after deep space operations and launch-related wear and tear. Another interesting thing to note is that the telescope is not orbiting the Earth like Hubble is. The James Webb Space Telescope is slated to be situated at the second L range point, or L2, which is about 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. At this point, the gravitational pull of the Sun and Earth, along with the telescope's orbital motion, balance out to allow the telescope to hover in a stable position relative to these bodies. 
This special location gives the telescope an unobstructed view of the universe free from interference from Earth's atmosphere or thermal emissions. Focusing on infrared observations allows the telescope to look further back in time than ever before, allowing researchers to study the formation and growth of these ancient galaxies and provide insights into the early phases of the universe. However, its infrared prowess does not stop there. It is also ideally suited to study the formation of stars and planetary systems, including those in our own Milky Way galaxy. One of the telescope's main objectives is to gather light from the first galaxies to form after the Big Bang. In recent times, it has been used to dig deep into the mysteries of gas planets. Given the enormous leap in technological capabilities and the precision engineering needed for its instruments, one might wonder if any of the technologies behind the James Webb Space Telescope have their roots in knowledge beyond our planet. These questions are raised by the technologies behind the telescope. The simple fact that such sophisticated equipment exists piques interest and opens the door to countless possibilities regarding our universe and the technologies we develop to investigate it. Even though there is no concrete proof to support extraterrestrial impact, we hope you have enjoyed our examination of Bob Lazar's UFO claims. Remember to like, comment on, and share this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe for more updates.